we starting? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the studio. Thanks for joining us here today. I hope your spring is off to a wonderful start. Um, we're finally having some nice warm weather here. Um, I have a nice little uh, demo planned for you today, something a little bit different. But I realized as I was preparing this morning, I realized that truck is kind of my favorite color. My house is kind of that color. Umbrella out there is that color. So it's kind of interesting, but it should be really fun to do. Uh, I've been doing quite a lot of painting lately, which has been really amazing. I'm just loving it, digging into painting. And so along with that, yesterday I'm in the studio, I'm getting ready to do something else. Um, some pastel work and I realized that I completely out of pastel mat and I kind of my, my heart started beating a little bit and anyway I, I called my friends over there at Dakota Pastel and I don't usually ask for I don't ask for a special treatment at all but I called them on hi it's Marla and I call hi Marla and I said I really am a little bit desperate is there any way that you could get that order out and they're so sweet there and so they got my I got a little notification yesterday just about 20 minutes later I don't even think it was 20 minutes maybe 10 minutes later that they shipped my order so thank you guys at Dakota I really 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 appreciate it and I'll probably have that paper today because they're in Washington and I'm in Oregon so I wouldn't be surprised if that nice package of papers on my doorstep in a couple hours here so thanks guys and i just also wanted to give a little, another shout i don't i'm not endorsing anybody at all but i don't usually do that that's not my thing um, i don't get any money from anybody um, but i wanted also to give another shout out to mullen books for helping my mom and i uh, with the art book collection it's really wonderful such a rich resource um, to have uh, nice art books. And then uh, just remember, I have an Etsy store, an Etsy shop, and I just posted some new stuff there. So if you're interested in, in checking out some of my new stuff, there is quite a, quite a few new pieces there. And I uh, also wanted to mention that the monthly uh, pastel painting online people we're, we're doing a little challenge and it's not really part of the 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 series of lessons but I, just to keep people engaged in the facebook group for those who enjoy that um, we're doing a spring into 20 challenge so that's 20 paintings in 20 days 20 minutes each so that getting that speed up and just getting in there without the idea of a uh, the perfectionist mindset, I think, is so rich and important when we're approaching our painting practice. The um, just getting in there on it with on a daily basis is so huge, and um, if you can at all manage it, um, it's it's a really great great way to get spring painting going. And so I thought I would read a little passage from this book that I really like. This is How to Be an Artist by Jerry Saltz. And so I picked out a page in here to read to you guys today. Real quick, it's just a couple paragraphs. And then I'm going to get painting. So this is entitled, Artists are Cats. Art is a dog. <laughs> I know this sounds ridiculous, but, it, but call your dog and it comes right over to you. It places its head on your lap, slobbers, wags its tail, asks to go for a walk, a miraculous direct communication with another species. Now, call your cat. It might look up, twitch a bit, perhaps go over to the couch, rub against it, circle once, and lie down again. What am I saying? The way the cat reacts is very close to the way artists communicate. The cat is not very interested in direct communication. The cat places a third thing between you and it, and it relates to you through this third thing. Artists, like cats, communicate abstractly, at a remove. This is why artists hate to, ha hate to be asked what their work means, even if, they make it, even if what they make is a picture of a landscape or a race riot. It's not about only those things. It's about much more, including itself. 
its materials, and how they are used, and how the artist sees the world. As for the art itself, it's much more like a dog, never quite behaving, making a mess, costing a lot, <laughs> always making you get supplies, but paying you back in wonder and delight. So I think that's pretty cool. All righty. Um, so you can see that I have the studio set up just a little bit differently today. So I have the, my pastels behind me and the easel up here. And I just thought it'd be fun to, we, we were doing some other filming in the studio and I thought it would be fun just for, to change it up just for, for, um, for giggles today to have it a little bit differently. So I'm gonna have to turn my back a little bit to the camera um, sometimes to grab some new pastels. But I realized, you know, as I'm working, I'm really developing a little working pile here. So chances are that I'm actually not going to be turning back um, once I get going all that frequently. So I think that it'll be just kind of interesting to see how that goes today. Let us know what you think. Um, let us know what you think about the, the studio setup right now. Um, okay, all right, let's get going. Um, I'm going to be painting this uh, old Chevy truck, and I took this photograph in Door County, Wisconsin, at a really beautiful farm. I was teaching there a number of years ago, and I still am working from some of those reference photos that I used from that trip. Uh, so it's such a, such a beautiful area of the country. Um, and I know my friend Colette lives out there in Wisconsin. Colette Odia Smith. And if you're a member of the monthly lessons, uh, she did a art speak interview and demo for us, which is so beautiful. Um, so that's up there on the website. So if you're a member, you get to watch that. Um, I'm gonna start out, my idea today is for this to be super Super loose, so I hope I get to keep it super loose. Something like this, when, when you're painting a thing such as this, it's really easy for it to get tight real fast. And I don't wanna do that, I wanna think shapes, I don't wanna think wheels and headlights and windows and grill, I wanna think what are those shapes? Um, and there are pretty nice strong shapes here for me to dig into. Um, so I'm going to concentrate on that primarily. On I am going to make it a rectangle in this case because that sort of feels like it makes sense. But what I'm going to think about is, okay, there's this shape. And then there's another shape. And then there's this shape. And this is kind of rounded. Comes here and then, then I've got the, the barn. Here's the angle. Here's, here's, a, here's this shape that's kind of like this and the windshield that's kind of like that. And then I've got oh, just shapes, just shapes. What are these shapes doing? How are they relating to one another? And then this is in here and you could see pretty quick i've got there's my truck it just sort of came it just appeared it's really neat and let's cast shadow under here we've got some grass and then there's the grill i think i'm um, uh, maybe maybe a little bit longer. Maybe it's out a tiny bit more. more. And then, then about like that. And then I think. And I love I love this color back in here. I actually want a little bit more in front because I like I like this I like the the division of this shape back here so that's pretty cool um neat uh, I'm going to apply an alcohol wash to this right now and I'm going to keep it 
um, again, kind of kind of loose and see what happens with the brush strokes um, and concentrating on some of these edges. So I'm using a, a, a synthetic sable here. Um, let me get this in here. So a quick question from yeah. Mara. From who? Uh, from Mara. Okay. Um, do you, are you concerned with frame size? Do no. Do you try to paint in standard size? No, I don't. Because, no, I'm not. I, I, it's a good question because it's, um, it's, you know, you, you think about that, but, but I, I, I don't want to get, if, 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 I don't want that to be a, any kind of constraint or drive my decision making in any way. So, you know, I might, you know, if it's, if it winds up being kind of close, I might end up cropping it so that it conforms to a, a, a size, but I'm not going to make a decision on a piece based on that. It's a, it's cool. And there's a little license plate there. So this is, you know, kind of roughing it up a little bit. That's another thing, another reason I like doing this. It's kind of giving it this kind of texture and playfulness and that feels good. You know, and it's a rustic object, right? It's not a, it's not a slick thing. So, um, getting it a little bit like that's not a bad way to go. Okay. Um, now this has got to dry. So let's see, let's hand this off to Kevin for a moment. And where did I, I wound up putting the hairdryer somewhere. Oh, I got it. You got it? Okay, he's got it. He's got it. He's on it. Um, so I'll just take a moment to give you guys a little sneak peek right now of year six. I'm not coming up for a little bit here. It's um, early July. But um, we're in year six. We're going into year six of monthly pastel painting lessons online. And so we're going to just, just tease out a few of the images. Let's see. Bryce, go ahead and, and put a couple of those up there, and I, I, don't, I don't remember what order I have them in. I don't think I have them in any order. Uh, no, that's not it. No. <laughs> no. Let's see. Yeah, there, there is. That is. That's one. So we've got a nice uh, little landscape here. And this is something a little bit different, the yellow apple, so like really some rich stuff. And then, of course, we've got still life, these peonies, which are really we're focusing on the, that beautiful rim lighting and, the, and also a loose application of the pastels. And this one, this one turned out nice. Um, so it's going to be a really wonderful, I was going to use, <laughs> I was going to say kick ass here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and say it because I think it is. Um, and I'm really, really proud of that because, uh, you know, after year six, you could start to think, well, you know, what's going on? And so it's a lot of years, but um, I think it's better than ever. And, you know, I'm always trying to, you know, I'm 62. I was trying to reinvent myself as an artist. And reinventing myself includes just getting better. And, um, you know, I feel like I am. And um, teaching also, I think, is one of the things that helps me get better. So um, I love that about what I do for you guys. And I love working with everyone. It's such a, such a fascinating, challenging process to create the lessons for you and come up with new ideas for them. Is that good, Bryce? Is that in the... Is it? Okay. Great. 
All right, so I do have to turn over here and grab some color. Uh, so I'm going to start out. And, you know, the just, just with doing the obvious with some orange. Picking a few things that feel obvious. Um, same thing. So I'm right at this point. I'm thinking local color. What's what are the the what are the local colors of the objects? So not a bad place to start. You know, once you get the, those local colors going, then you can start expanding on them, getting more more nuance. Oh, I think that that's pretty close to the wall. Okay, just going to start. I'm just going to start by just staining in some color. Can you remind us of the paper you're using? This is pastel matte. I had I had white. That's all I had left. Which, it, in this case, it's fine because I'm I was also wanting to do the the. Um, the uh, alcohol wash, so it did work out. It's totally fine. And I also find that, you know, we have what we need. We, you know, you can, we're, uh, we're artists, so we, could, we can make do, be creative. And if it's not too uh, distracting, um, mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about your easel as well? My what? Your easel. Easel? This thing? This old thing? This old thing? <laughs> it is a Santa Fe 2. Um, and I I like this easel a lot. Um, it to, For me, it does so so much of what what I need. Um, there's a... There's a there's a lot more expensive rigs out there that you could you could um, um, delve into, but I'm, I've just found that over the years that this is you know done really well by me. I I um, I have two of them in fact, uh, so at one point I you know could have decided on something else, but I I wound up getting another one of these so. Um, that tells you something about it. I think it's pretty good. So I'm just going to get these you know, colors in. Whoops. Sometimes when I'm doing the live streams, I go a little too fast for my own good because I anxious. I get a little anxious. And so I'm not worried about, you know, staying in the lines or anything like that. That's not what it's about. It's probably because I'm when I'm pivoting, I'm not going to the same spot, right? Is that right? Um, are you <laughs> kind of, <laughs> so this this will work. Oh, I love that that 
old license plate. It's kind of right there. Down, um, I'm just still thinking shapes. I don't want, you know, the moment that I start thinking, oh, it's a this and it, oh, it's a that, it's then, then I lose it. I lose the looseness. I lose the, um, the playfulness of it. And, that, and that's the most important part. Let's get, let's see, I think it'd be fun to get this, some of this going. Can you remind us what you used for your underpainting? Was it a black Conti or? It was a, um, a just a piece of charcoal. Compressed charcoal? Or? Yeah. I like this green gold better than just straight up green. Seems to be more in keeping with the, the feel of this guy. Let's see, there's the, there's the wheel. And then it goes like that. Kind of getting it. Okay, now once I have that, I can think about some other stuff. Maybe, do I want this? Yeah, I think I do. that can I get something a little brighter a little lighter and brighter than that maybe this maybe a little more orange. I was looking for something a little pinker or redder, but maybe this will work. Okay. Um. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. Um. 
you have a reason why you chose the black um, charcoal for the underpainting? Oh, I just think that that um, that that um, that charcoal, you know, it's got a lot of darks. It's got a lot of black. Okay, I'm saving the grill because and the headlights because I know that that's going to be fun to paint and I'm and it's going to pull it together. So I am I am sort of um, saving this fun part of the painting for myself. <laughs> not not because I want to be tricky or anything, but I I know that it's going to be good. So. Um, That wasn't the right stick. Let's see, is this it? No, that's not it either. What am I looking at? I've got my, my uh, you know, you, uh, I've got this little pile here now and they're getting dirty. Um, okay. Now, right now, I'm kind of deciding, do I, do I want to do any more alcohol wash at this point? Do I want that? Um, it's looking kind of cool, so I'm kind of thinking maybe no. Um, might not need it. Let's see. Um. Mm. Mara has a question about if we have a preference for brand and style of lighting for the studio. Oh boy, it's a that's a really complicated question for us because we're 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 not we're lighting for the video and for um, the art. So the my main my main comment there is to um, um, other than having Roger Thompson as your friend <laughs> which um, is lucky <laughs> um, my friend Roger Thompson is a um, professional um, videographer director photographer um, and so he helps us with the video end a lot but the our, our main takeaway with lighting is to have all the lighting the same temperature so what so you, you can have everything warm you can have everything daylight or what i think is cool cooler light um, but basically have it all consistent so the lighting on your on your painting surface whatever whatever lights you use 
whether it be, you know, whatever it is, that the temperature is all the same. And then you're gonna, then your color is gonna be consistent. So that's, I think that's the main, main, you know, takeaway um, with, with, in terms of lighting. Would you say that's correct, Kevin? Yeah, 100%. And, you know, mm -hmm. you just experiment with, with uh, different brands and stuff. I, I, we, we've had good luck with all kinds of stuff. Really expensive, you know, um, soft lights. And also those little newers have really proven to be yeah, versatile. this this guy up here. Yeah, yeah it, it is. Get, yeah, it's spelled N E E W E R. Newer. Mm -hmm. and they're a lighting company, and they have all kinds of stuff, and it's affordable. Of course, yeah, it's, it is it's not affordable. pro stuff, so anyone yeah, can get it. Play yeah. around with it. Yeah, it's not. It's it's like pro. Some of it's prosumer kind of. You know, it's kind of in between. Um, it's, it, yeah, you're not gonna. Um, you can no. invest in it, and it's not gonna break the bank. Yeah, Brett, not, right. And then, you know, it has temperature control, it has, it has intensity control, all that stuff. Yeah. Our, our, our issue is always that we're, we're trying to do too many things. <laughs> really is kind of what it boils down to. But um, we kind of, kind of manage. So, see, this guy comes together really nice. Um, it's fun. And you see how I built it. I, I, I built it not, not thinking, oh, it's a truck or anything like that. I just, um, um. What do we got, you guys? What's going on? Okay. Okay, now... Um, I'm just at the about the point where I can play with that grill. I'm just about ready to do that. Um, what else do I want to do? Um, Oh, there's a little, little, little bit here. It needs to come along. Come yeah, on. just to repeat really quick, uh, newer is N-E-E-W-E-R. And we're not endorsing them. No, just, we, uh, we don't, we don't endorse any, anything, not even Dakota. I'm just yeah. giving them a shout out because I really appreciate them. Um, but no, we don't, we don't take anybody's money for saying anything or anything like that. Yeah, we just have one, we have one posted up on the, uh, on the easel and it works pretty good. Yeah. It's directional. You can yeah. change the intensity. It doesn't come with the, we have it up here, but we have it clamped on with a separate clamp. The clamp does not come with it. So the way we, we have it sort of, Sanford and Son. Yes. <laughs> we do. <laughs> All right, let's 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 go for these uh for the the grill and whatnot. So the first thing I'm gonna do is say where this light is right here um, this guy
Hang on, I want, I want some. Uh, I want some nice white, white. On, so I'm grabbing a, a stick that is, um, it's a schmenke and it's their whitest white. Um, and I, I think that they make, I don't use a lot of schmenke anymore, um, surprisingly, but th this stick is probably the whitest white that I have. And I'm not going to make all that grill white, white, but I, I do want some white, white. So this is a kind of a, um, a turquoise. So, and again, I'm just going to come in. I'm, you know, this isn't exactly how it is, but I'm, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to just put it in nice and strong um, because I, that's what I want. I want, a, you know, nice, strong um, mark making. Get a little closer together up here. So, it, like I said, it's not it's not exact, but it's it's good because it's just nice and got it in there. Now, if you're if you're a Chevy uh, truck aficionado and you you know you may want this exact, but that's not my that's not my goal here, so I'm not concerned about that. Going back to an earlier question from Tracy, um, mm -hmm. your thoughts on spraying alcohol when you're doing a... Uh, oh, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, you know, there's all kinds of fun things you can do. And you always use 70%. I use 70%. I don't know that it makes that much difference, but it's a little less, it's, you know, a little not quite as strong so that, um, you know, hopefully it... If, if 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 your paper is gonna react badly, it, it keeps it from. Um, you know, it's not as harsh. So I guess what I'm saying. Okay. Just gonna. It's not like this in the photo. It's not um, quite as that I'm going to add it because it just kind of tells a story. Yeah, I like it. Uh, let's see. Um. Maybe I got this a little short. <clears throat> Just 
Let's make that little drawing adjustment there. I think that's better. So then that center line is a little different spot like that. And then Now I'm going to grab a couple of harder sticks. Um, let's see. Oh, I know what I want to do. Let's just get these little highlights. Like that. Super fun. This is kind of coming out here. A little bit of reflected light on this, this guy. What else do I want to do? It's pretty neat. Um, And maybe it'd be fun to get a little more color, texture, whatnot in back in here. I think it turned out pretty cool. Um, and just kind of the idea that, you know, it doesn't, it's not about the what, it's about seeing the shape, seeing it simply, deciding on a technique that's going to get um, kind of further the idea here. And, you know, this is this old rusty old truck sitting in front of us beautiful barn in Wisconsin so it's it's rustic it's rough so um, some of my choices were about that in terms of media and technique
Yeah, this is a real keeper. Yeah, it's cool. So Kelton has a question. Mm -hmm. uh, Marla, do you sell these studies? Do I sell these? Well, sure. <laughs> that where would that be? Um, well, the, the, my Etsy store will be where this will go. Um, I'm not sure whether it'll go there right away. I like it, so I might want to ha have it hanging around the studio for a few days. Um, but I've been doing a lot of painting lately. But yeah, I yeah I do sell my paintings, um, and I sell them unframed because it's easy, and I, I don't want to get involved with framing any longer. I'm too, too, too old and too busy for that. So, um, I sell stuff unframed. Makes it nice. Whoops. That's. Yeah, So this one might go up in a couple days. Yeah. Cool. No guarantee. No guarantee. I, I have to decide. I could probably sell it. If, if someone wants it, I could probably part with it. It's cute. That's definitely. Hmm. I just want to see one thing. I'm. I might be sorry if I do this. I'm not going to do it. I have. I had an idea, and I'm not. But I'm not going to do it because I think it'll mess it up. I think it's pretty. Pretty good, just the way it is. Um, thinking a couple things here. I've just been having a lot of fun painting lately. I've been just really kind of digging in, just kind of connecting back up with pastel painting. Not that I um, haven't been, but I, I haven't. Um, I think it's really important to give yourself permission time in the studio and really um, just paint like nobody's watching kind of thing. And uh, um, so I've been doing that a lot. And it's just been really rich, really um, good, good thing. Um, all right, I'm I'm messing with it now, and I don't want to do that. I think it's um, the better part of valor to stop while you're ahead. So I think I'm going to do that here, and um, call it call this one good. Oh oh, have there? There's one other. There's one other little thing I have to do. And that is, I want to put a little bit something lighter. And oh, yeah, let's put the. Thank you. Let's get these out. Give it a crop. Let's see what it looks like all together. It's fun. Yeah, it's really, really fun. Hmm, there are, there's one other thing I want to do. I'm going to do it. There's one thing I want to do. I want to kind of lighten this, this up a little bit. So do you, for things like chrome, do you ever work with silver, gold, or copper pastels? No. <laughs> no, not really. Oh. And also, in terms of your signature, where would you sign this one? This one, I think, right there, because it's sort of um, 
you know, wants to wants to balance out. There's a lot of complexity over here and you know it's point it's facing this way. So it seems like that's the right place. Lately I've been using, let's see if I've got one. Lately I've been using, of all things, a colored pencil to sign these. And the colored pencil is good because um, it, oh I have one other thing I gotta do. Um, it is um, uh, a, um, it, it's hard and it will dig into the, the painting surface um, better than a pastel will. So, uh, so, I'll, so I'm, I'll do it. I'll go ahead and do it. And I just sign my, I sign at, at an A, at a, not, I don't, I sign on a straight line, but I, I slant my, um, the, the, um, the letters, um, so it's, I, I don't do the, this number where the whole signature is this, so it's on a line, and I um, only sign my last name, and that's not because I'm hiding that I'm a woman artist or anything like that, it's because I think it just looks better, it's simpler, and so um, this is, and this is not how I would sign a check. This is a, sort of abbreviated, and it just looks more artistic than I would sign my check. So, um, so, and my signature has evolved over the years, and I think it's a, you know, it's perfectly fine for that to be the case. So, yeah. All right, guys. Um, thanks for joining us today. Really, really appreciate it. Oh, I did that pretty fast. That's good. Um, and um, let's see. Just make sure you um, head to the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, and check it out. And we're, We've got some new stuff that's going to be happening um, in the course of the next few months here. So, um, yeah, please head over there and, and see what we have going. There's uh, the monthly membership, and there's also standalone workshops in watercolor, in oil, in acrylic, and of course pastel. And I hope you guys have a very, very lovely weekend. If you are a monthly member and you are staying on for the critique, we'll see you in about 30 minutes. We'll start at 1.30 for critiques and fun and games there. All right, guys. All right, see you soon. Thank you. Bye.